What is going on everybody and welcome to the basics and today we are getting to that Neve 88 RLB. Thank you for joining. As always man, please leave a little like, comment, subscribe, all that, you know, I'm doing it with my fingers right now cuz uh I don't got my face on camera. <laughs> But please drop a little like, comment, subscribe for your boy. I would really appreciate, man. Helps the channel a lot, especially if you guys are liking these videos. Uh, more streams on my Twitch. I do a lot of mixing streams and mastering streams and gear printing streams on my Twitch. So go ahead and follow that Twitch, man. Especially if you want to see more action um, on this 500 series. Without further ado, man, let's get right into it. So the basics, the Neve 88 RLB. We have our input gain knob here. So this is going to give you control over how much input is coming into your Neve 88 RLB. And we have our selector for our input here as, as well. It's also a button. You just click that and it switches to line or DI. So this does take mic, line, and DI inputs. Now, next, we have our regenerate button. Now, this regenerate button is what is giving you that warm Neve sound out of your module. So the regenerate button only works on line and DI modes, though. It does not work in mic. It won't even let you switch to the mic mode uh, for you to use that regenerate. So even if you are in mic mode and you accidentally hit that regenerate, it's going to take you out of mic mode and put you in line or DI. Regenerate, man. Definitely, you definitely want to, you know, if, you, if, you're, if you're coming line in out of something, man, you definitely want to hit that regenerate button, get that, that lovely knee warmth off that. Next, we're going to have our low cut or high pass filter, whatever you like to call it. I like low cut. Um, and obviously, you know, we got that nice little knob to cut up to up to 315 hertz. It says all the way here from 31.5 hertz. Um, and to activate that or deactivate it, you're just going to click that knob just like your input gain control. Next, we have our 48 volt phantoms. That is for condenser microphones and not ribbons. Do not put any phantom power on ribbon microphones, please. You will blow it up. Um, I think some of the newer ones, uh, uh, certain models will take phantom power or you have to use phantom power to use them, but just go by the rule of thumb, man. If you're ever using a ribbon microphone, do not hit that 48 volt unless you know exactly what microphone you have in your hands and if it does allow phantom power. That is the only mic I think that will blow up if you actually give it 48 volts. If you put it on a dynamic mic or anything like that, then you don't, you, it won't harm it, but you know, just don't do it because it's not good. You're sending extra power to the microphone it doesn't need. Yeah, so dynamics don't need it, anything like that. Uh, that's your 48 volt for condenser microphones. Then you have your 20 dB pad. So if your microphone is coming in hot already, if it doesn't need that much, uh, that much gain on the input, or if you have your line signal coming in and it's hot, even with you being all the way at zero on that input, you can hit this 20 dB pad and boom, you just get you get you just gave yourself 20 dB of headroom to play with that input knob. Next, you have your phase uh, reverse or your polarity flip, which is going to help you if you're doing any stereo microphone uh, setups um, or if you have a stereo pair of the Neve and let's say you're doing a mid side frequency to uh, mid side stereo microphone deciphering you can definitely use this i don't actually don't think you could actually decipher it with just the modules because you do need to pan uh either left or the right after you uh, reverse polarity on one of the channels and everything like that so but this will definitely help if you're getting any phase in your signal or something is just sounding wishy-washy then we have our frip I like calling it the frip. <laughs> so this is activating your front input you are your front IP front input. So this is going to let you use if you're plugging in an XLR here, if this is not clicked in, you will not hear anything from this XLR line input or DI input. So activating that and then plugging your XLR in here. Um, if you're using a microphone or your line in, if you're coming out of a compressor or something like that, or your Apollo or your interface point blank period, or your DI, which is a TS cable, uh, TRS is going to be line. You definitely want to use TRS for line DI. You're going to want to use TS instrument cable. Um, one is just balanced. One is not balanced for, for the high impedance. Um, yeah. So you definitely want to hit that frip to be able to activate this and use whatever signal you are putting in here. Next, we have our ground lift. So this ground lift here is a magical little flip, that magical little switch that is going to allow you to, if you have any, if you're coming in DI and you have any of that nasty 60 hertz, mm, 
in the background, you know, that, sh that stuff we don't like. Then you're just going to hit this ground lift and boom, it's going to be gone. Hopefully. Um, I have yet to actually test it out. I don't have any instruments or anything that I'm using DI at the moment. Uh, so I actually can't test it out. But yeah, that is the idea. It's going to lift the ground on that if you have a ground loop. And it's just going to let it pass straight through and you're going to execute that ground hum. And that, my friends, is the Neve 88 RLB. So please, if you guys liked it and enjoyed the video, I definitely appreciate the support. Please leave a little like, comment, subscribe for your boy, man. And we are on to the SSL.